Hey guys, Sportnet is here, welcome back to episode 2 of the Game Maker series. So yeah, today I want to cover basic object creation, um, object events. So um, today we're going to be looking at the create event and the step event. And I also want to be getting the basis of the movement sorted for my game. So. I've created two sprites here, um, there is SPR wall and SPR player. Um, these are very basic sprites which I've clicked edit sprite, um, I've double clicked the image and yeah I've literally created a square image which has a power of 2, um, it's very important that in game like texturing, um, all textures should be primarily a power of 2 because um, if the irregular sizes were not like supported very well for all the graphics cards, so typical powers of two can include eight by eight, sixteen by sixteen, uh, thirty-two by thirty-two, sixty-four, sixty-four, hundred and twenty-eight, um, five twelve, um, thousand and twenty-four. The list goes on. Um, but the more size you have, the more memory that it uses. Just keep that in mind. Um, for the time being we're using 64 by 64 textures and to create this basic player um, all I did was got the square tool and like added a couple of squares here and there uh, I'll just uh, add a, a few kneecaps and like I don't know a hand and another hand and like yeah a neck even <laughs> but yeah <laughs> it's a basic sprite so just take that okay and then we've also got another sprite here called SPR wall um, and that's basically just a regular well, wall here, so I'm um, going to be using them in the game today. So first thing we want to do, uh, we've got the OBJ initializer, then, well object, sorry. This defines some basic global variables. Now we're not going to be focusing on this very much in this tutorial, I want to get the basic player movement sorted. Um, but yeah, like this gravity setting, um, this is going to be very important in the future, so um, we need to keep note of that. Um, so we're going to create two new objects. The first one is going to be obj underscore player. This is going to use the SPR player, um, <laughs> unsurprisingly. And then there is also going to be another object, obj, you guessed it, wall. <laughs> um, and that's going to use the wall texture. So um, that is also a solid object, so just to make note of that. Right, uh, so the player object, this is where it gets interesting. Now, there's lots of different events in Game Maker, and I covered this in the previous episode, but what we want to be using today is the create event. This occurs when the instance of the object is created. So whenever this object is created, it will create variables specific to this object. So um, then what you want to do, you want to apply an action to this, and basically it's under control, and then execute code. We're going to be using code mainly for these projects because it gives you more customization and control over what you're doing. You can use the pre-built game maker functions, but um, they're just easier and they allow you to do so much more with your video games. So, um, oh, I've just got a message. Right, anyway, so <laughs> let's get into this. Right, so there's going to be a few variables which we need to declare in this. The first one is HSP, and that is going to equal zero. That is standing for the horizontal speed just to recognize that um, the next one we've got is VSP now unsurprisingly that means vertical speed um, that is how you spell vertical into it uh, no. There we go. <laughs> right. Uh, one other thing I want to mention with this, by the way, is that a forward slash, uh, this, if you put two of them together, notice how the text turns green. That is for a comment. So, uh, if you put 
three comments at the very beginning, so three forward slashes, sorry, and then a comment. Uh, so let's name this initialize core variables like that, and then hit the tick mark. Notice how it renames it in the action event. Um, I think that's a very cool feature that they've implemented. Um, the next one that we're going to have is movement speed and that is going to be defined as MSP so MSP and that is going to equal 4 the next one is JSP and that's going to stand for jump speed so now making note of this, this is going to be equal to um, 5, like so, and the last one is going to be gravity, and I'm going to identify that as GRV, and it's going to equal 0 0.4. Um, I'll explain more on why it's like 0 0.4 in a bit, but um, okay, so now we've got as variables, uh, just hit the tick mark on that. So when the object is created, it's going to create these five different variables that I've defined here, um, and yeah, it's gonna—it's not gonna do anything with them, but it's just gonna define them so we can use them. The next event which I want to add is a step event. Now this occurs every one sixtieth of a second in my game. Um, I talked about that in the previous episode, so if you want to go and watch that, please go ahead. But. Um, we're going to execute code in this as well, and I want to call this um, movement processing, like that. Is it 1s? I believe it's 2s's. Come on, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but um, right, so the first thing I want to do is define. Uh, the keys that I'm going to press. So, say for example, if I press a key, I want to assign it to that variable, like that key, to perform certain actions. So, in my instance, I'm going to use W A S and D. Um, I'm not sure what S might be for because this is a side scroller game that we're doing. But um, yeah, that's the layout of keys which I'm going to be using. So, I'm going to call variable here, and I'm going to name it A and it's going to equal keyboard underscore check and that is going to open a bracket and it's going to say ORD. Now what ORD is, that is basically checking whether the key is held down I believe. Um, if we do actually want to look at things, um, so like functions and statements, we can actually click them with the middle mouse button and it brings up a tiny little help page here. Click display and it actually shows you um, the different um, things that functions can mean. So ORD uh, returns a string. So um, you use ORD if you are using like a piece of text as a variable so and you want to use it as an input so um, what it does it gets the unicode code for that specific string um, so what we want to do is assign that to quotation a so that's telling the computer that we're using the a key close that off with some brackets and then a semicolon to close the statement um, and also we want one more bracket there, like that. So I like to open statements with a bracket. Um, and yeah, that's fine. So next thing we want to do is do D. So that's going to be the right key. So bearing in mind A is left key. And D is going to be the right key. So, D is going to equal uh, almost the same as A, keyboard underscore check, und well, open bracket, ORD, 
open bracket uh, D and then close them off like that but it's going to be slightly different um, because the left key is actually slightly different from the right key because it needs to process direction um, I'm actually going to cut that with control and X I'm going to paste it there because um, that is going to be a minus now reason I'm doing that is because D is going to go um, toward the right of the screen and A is going to go toward the left um, say for example if I like I move across the screen um, the top left corner is zero zero um, and if I start heading right across the screen to the top right that will be um, yeah 1920 by zero so like and if I go to the bottom right that'll be 1920 by 1080 so I'll um, I'll edit it so that I can show you a graphing but um, yeah it's it's a bit hard to grasp knowing that the top left is actually zero zero on the graph of coordinates in like computing. Um, anyway, the next thing I'm going to do is declare a variable. So and it's going to be called net movement. Now what this is going to do, um, I'm just going to call it net underscore movement, and that is going to equal a plus d. Like that. So, essentially, that is taking the A key and the D key, and if both of them are pressed at the same time, then they will equal zero. Um, if one of them is pressed, it will equal like one direction. Um, if none of them are pressed, it will equal zero. So that um, creates con well, it prevents confliction between pressing both keys at once. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is take the uh, create event variable which we just used uh, which is HSP and I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to paste that there and it's going to equal net underscore movement times by uh, the movement speed, so MSP, which we're taken from there, which is 4. So, what I've just done there, uh, the horizontal speed of the player equals the net movement, so it can either be positive or negative, depending on the keyboard check, and times bit by the movement speed. So, what that's essentially doing is processing the horizontal movement for our character. So I'm just going to identify that with a tag. So, like that. Right, so once that's done, we need to assign that variable HSP to the player. So let's just say OBJ underscore player which is the name of our object player and then dot x yeah just a minute um obj player dot x what that means um that is a constant which is implemented by game maker um they basically process the coordinates for that specific object x is the horizontal axis um, and then y is the vertical axis so we're assigning um, obj player x coordinate to um, equal uh, hsp like that no sorry actually it's plus equal because we're setting it relative to the horizontal speed so the difference is between equaling um, just it sets it to that value um, always but if you set it with a plus equal it sets it relative to that value so it takes the initial value and adds it on so there's a big difference between setting something relative and setting something just equal to um, that's just an important thing 
So that's just going to be identified with a tag. Uh, yeah, assigning coordinate. Oh, actually, let's just say speed. Horizontal speed, even. <laughs> right. So, uh, let's just give this a test run. If I hit play and run it. Oh, <laughs> I've just totally forgot one thing. We need to actually add the player to the room. So, let's just go objects and then player. Let's click him in there. Okay. And let's run it. So, now we've got my player and I'm pressing the A key and it's moving left. Pressing the D key, it's moving right. If I press both of them, it stays still. And that's what we want. So, um, I'm not going to cover the vertical speed and the gravity in this video because um, I want to separate that into its individual video um, because it gets quite technical regarding collision detection and things. So I'm going to leave that. Um, but for the time being, this is a pretty well functioning like left and right movement that we've got now for the character. And we're going to take this a step further in the next tutorial. So, um, anyway guys, this has just been a, a small brief opening to the creating step event and basic left and right movement for a side scroller. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it really helps me out. And I shall see you guys in the next video. So I hope you've really enjoyed it guys. Peace out. <laughs>